Hello, this is Kelly with Unpacking the Trunk Costumes. I thought it would take this rainy afternoon and finally tackle the CosTube 20 questions. So here we go. First question. What was your first costume bonus if you share an embarrassing photo? Okay, I've got the embarrassing photo. But first, I honestly, I can't remember like the first costume that I made. My mom made a lot of our costumes like for Halloween and they were always the kind of costume that you had to wear over a snowsuit because I grew up in Alaska. But uh, there is one really specific costume I remember her making for me that was kind of me dipping my toe into historical costume. I was really, really into those Dover paper dolls that had the fashion plates in them and the beautiful colors and the beautiful dresses. Well, I loved the Victorian and the bustle dresses, so I asked her to make me one for Halloween one year, and she did. I was so proud of that dress, and I was, I think I was probably the only person in my whole elementary school that wore a historical costume like that. So, there you go. What is your favorite costume you've made, or what costume are you most proud of? So, I've just kind of gotten back into making costumes. So I, I don't have very many right now. Um, honestly, I have to say, and it's a really simple costume, but right now I'm just really proud of my World War I nurses costume because World War I nurses were amazing. And I'm just really proud of the historical significance of that costume. What costume do I dream of making? I don't have one of those beautiful kind of grandiose dresses in mind at this point, but I am working on my Klondike um, woman going to the Klondike outfit, and the next project coming up is the coat. And I'm dreaming about that one, good dreams and bad dreams, because um, it's going to require some tailoring, and I have never really tackled that before, so. I'm kind of dreaming about that one right now. What's a sewing task I love versus a sewing task I hate? Okay, well, I think for me the most frustrating part of sewing is constantly making mock-ups and tweaking them to get them to fit on me, because I'm not really making anything for anybody right now, but it's, it's like, how do I reach those spaces in the back? And I have a dress form, but I want to get it to look right on me and especially as I move in it. So getting those little alterations and getting it just right to me can get really frustrating and kind of discouraging. However, what I love most is seeing all the pieces come together. So I have to go through the whole markup stage, of course, to get there, but I love seeing all the pieces come together and how they construct and getting to that final garment that I've been working on all this time and, and looking back at it and going, yeah, I did it. So that's my favorite thing and one of my least favorite things. Okay, number seven, would I rather sew wool or silk? I honestly can't remember a time when I have had either. I can't afford them really and the costumes I'm making right now are not like super high priority um, to get the most perfect uh, fabrics. However, I'm working with a wool blend right now and I have absolutely loved how it feels. I love the way it irons. I love the way it hangs. I love the way it drapes. So I guess I have to say wool. Next question, number eight, or no, sorry, number six. Would I rather go to a themed event or pick my own theme event? Oh, I would definitely rather go to a themed event because going to a themed event would cause me to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone and try something, challenge myself to make something that maybe I haven't made before, like this costume that I made for my husband and myself for a party that we went to, a themed event that we went to last 
Halloween time, I think it was. So, yeah, I think I would rather go to a themed event. Would I rather attend a big ball or an intimate dinner? I'm an introvert, so I would definitely prefer an intimate dinner. Um, however, I do think it would be kind of fun to go to a big ball, as long as I could do the introvert thing and sit and observe and really watch the people in their costumes and how they dance and how they relate to each other. Um, of course, going to a big ball with some close friends, that would be pretty fun too. <laughs> Next question. Do you prefer to machine sew or hand sew? If I could still hand sew comfortably, I would. I'm developing arthritis in my hands, so my hand sewing days um, have to be limited. <laughs> um, so I do um, machine sew, and I got myself a wonderful sewing machine about a year, year and a half ago, and I love it. So it makes sewing with a machine an absolute pleasure. Number nine, do I like wigs, hair pieces, or my own hair? I have to say my own hair. I let my hair go gray white about a year and a half, two years ago, and I really like how it's kind of turning out. I think it's good Irish jeans <laughs> in, my, in my makeup somehow. I've tried wigs, I don't like them. I've tried hair pieces. I'm not good enough at them yet to know if I really like them or not. So I'm gonna stick with my own hair on that one. All right, here we go. We're on to number 10. Name five small businesses you love for costume things. Okay, narrowing this down was really hard, but I did. And I know I'm gonna leave a lot of others out, but here we go, okay? Number one, wearing history. Lauren is a wonderful pattern designer. She is so creative. She's incredibly kind. And I love her patterns because they are well-researched. They're interesting. They're fun to make. They're easy to follow. Wearing history all the way. Same thing with black snail patterns. I've just run into black snail patterns. She has such a wonderful variety. I love how they're constructed. I love the research. I love how they go together. Black snail patterns, great, great um, small business. Folkwear patterns is another one. They have been around a long time. In fact, the first historical pattern, historically inspired pattern I ever bought was in this little mercantile in Seward, Alaska. I was probably 12 or 13 years old and it was the Victorian, or, or, yeah, the Victorian walking skirt um, from Folkwear. I still have it somewhere. And I've made that version of that skirt so many times. Folkwear patterns are, again, well-researched, they're easy to follow, um, they're beautifully drawn, and I'd say they're, they're with, worth picking up, especially if you're interested in history bounding. There's some great history bounding patterns at Folkwear. Morgan Donner has a lovely little Etsy site and I have one of the brooches that she made. I wore it to work and got so many compliments on it. She hand makes some beautiful pins and different things. Check out her, web, uh, her, her website, her Etsy site, definitely. And finally, local gal Kay Demlo with Lavender's Green Historical Clothing. She makes the most beautiful clothing and she makes the corsets and she makes all the periods and they're beautiful and she's a great teacher and I would recommend that you check her out. I will be sure to link below in the description box to all of the people and all of the businesses that I'm mentioning here. So name five YouTubers we should all check out. Five? <laughs> That's all I get? Okay, five YouTubers you should check out. Costubers. Um, Yule, and I'm going to say your last name wrong and I really apologize. Yule Theisen, T H I J S S E N. Yule makes the most beautifully filmed videos on her YouTube channel. She is incredibly creative. She does her research. I love how she journals her work and what she's going to be doing before she does it and the way that you can follow her steps and her progress is just beautifully shot and easy to follow definitely check out yule morgan donner 
What a nice person. What a genuinely nice person. And what incredibly helpful and creative and well-researched videos she makes. Um, she's sort of local. She's up in Seattle. I'm down here in Oregon. I would definitely recommend that you check her out for the historical content as well as her great sense of humor. Um, and, and just there's so much to learn from Morgan. Definitely check her out. Rachel Maxey. I think I'm going with the theme of research here. Rachel is very, very thorough in her research with a large dose of humor thrown in, an incredibly cute dog. And I look forward to seeing her videos every Friday. I stop what I'm doing when they come out and I watch Rachel because I know I'm gonna learn something. I know I'm going to be amused and I know I'm gonna spend some time with somebody that, well, gosh, I wish I could just spend time with one-on-one -on -one in re real life, but I'm glad I have YouTube so I can spend time with her that way. Costuming drama. Noel, you are wonderful. I love your videos every week. I look forward to all of them. I watch to the end of all of them. Um, Noel is a great teacher. She is just super great, one-on-one, -on -one, always has something interesting to say. And I would strongly suggest that you check her out. I love her whiteboard where she goes on and she, she checks off what she's done and what she has yet to do. That's very inspiring. I made one for myself. I don't keep up with it as well as she does, but definitely check out Noelle. She is a genuinely positive um, person and I, I just really appreciate her. And then I had have to say Carolina Zabroska, and gosh, I hope I said your last name right, Carolina. Again, a lovely person inside and out who really does her research and has a great sense of humor. She is, has so many videos and they're all so interesting. I, I just really look forward to seeing them whenever I get it, whenever they come up, I stop what I'm doing. She just is a great person. I would strongly recommend that you check out her videos. Okay, we're on to question 12. Favorite color? Green. Just green. Green's my favorite color. Pearls or sparkles? I don't have any of either. <laughs> um, I guess since I'm just kind of a classic grounded down to earth person I'd have to say pearls because they seem kind of down to earth and practical to me. I don't know. Pearls. Okay. Pearls. Um, number 14. What is a costume trip you dreamt of taking? This year I wanted to go to the Victorian Festival in Port Townsend. Cancelled. That is a trip I definitely want to take. I used to live in Oak Harbor and I used to go to Port Townsend all the time. I didn't know they had a Victorian festival. Now that I'm into costuming, I would love to go to that. I would love to meet Rebecca there, Lady Rebecca Fashions. I would love to meet Sarah Chrisman um, and, and, and her husband Gabe and all the things that they do. I, I think that would be an absolutely lovely way to spend a weekend. And one of these days, I'm going to go to costume college. I will. One of these days. Favorite cocktail? I don't have one because I don't really drink cocktails. However, I will always find time for a glass of wine. So, Chianti, Sangiovese, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris, uh, you name it, Chardonnay. I could go on. I like wine. Let's see, who is a customer you'd love to meet? That was easy, Kathy Hay. I would love nothing more than to sit down with Kathy, each of us having a cup of tea and perhaps a scone, and just talk, just talk about anything, about anything. It doesn't even have to be about costume, just about anything. Kathy is such a genuine person. The, there's no nothing to hide with her it seems and I love her videos on YouTube linked below um, because she's just so real and so genuine I would love to have a cup of tea with you Kathy hey plainer patterned is question 17 both can I say both both 
I, I don't have a preference. I like both. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, 18, use a pattern or make your own. I always use a pattern. I rarely m do anything just on my own. I don't really have that skill set yet. Um, I do enjoy using patterns. I, I like learning from them because I have, there's so much to learn. Um, so I enjoy using a pattern and learning how things are constructed within the pattern. And I think as, as I get used to using them more and more, I'll be able to maybe start thinking about making my own pattern. The other, other pattern I, I guess I could say I made was, um, with Morgan Donner's instruction, I made my medieval kirtle. So there you go. Let's see, what is my favorite era to wear and my favorite to make? Favorite to make and wear right now is Edwardian because that's what I've been doing the most of. I love the, the, the blouses, I love the skirts, I love the structure of the dresses, I love the big hats. Um, so I would say Edwardian. And finally, what's one thing we don't know about you? You don't know about me, which you will soon know, that I would love to go on a, it's called the Wild Women Wilderness Retreat. It's in Alaska. They give you a dog team, they teach you how to mush them, and you get on your dog sled and you go with a whole group of women and some amazing mushers, and their names are Paige Drobny, Ryan Olson, Kaylin Hall, and Mary Rose Huntley. You go out into the wilderness of Alaska, all the way out to, you stay in Arctic tents, and you go all the way out to a lodge, and then you come all the way back. Yes, I would very much like to do that. Another thing you might not know about me, you may have guessed, is that someday I would actually love to put on the outfit that I'm making for the woman going to the Klondike, and I would actually like to hike the Chilkoot Trail in costume. Gotta get some uh, body in shape to do that, but I've got that on my list. So that's it. I did it. All 20 questions. Woo woo! So if you enjoy this, please subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to be notified of future videos, hit the like or hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you next time. Bye!